Hello, my name's Paul Clark, and I'm Professor of Education at St Mary's University College in London. And uh, for the rest of the time, I keep bees, and I have a project called the Pop-Up Farm, which I want to talk to you about a little bit later in this talk. The context for this talk comes from some work that I've been doing, working with communities all around the world, in different parts of the world, in different environments that are under challenge. And that includes some communities in, in the UK, as well as those in Africa, and parts of China. So the story that I'm going to tell you comes from the connections between those different environments and observations that we're, learn that we're gathering as a result of that work. I thought I'd start with a quote from a guy called Vaclav Havel, who's a Czech president, and he says, I think there are good reasons for suggesting that the modern age has ended. Today, many things indicate that we're going through a transitional period when it seems that something is painfully being born. It's as if we were crumbling, decaying and exhausting itself, while something else, as yet undetermined, is rising from the rubble. Now, I find that really interesting because, in a sense, it indicates that we're in a period of transition and that the physical and conceptual changes that, and challenges that we're facing are more than just the normal run-of-the-mill challenges that perhaps we've got used to and accustomed to as we've gone through the last two or three hundred years of industrialization. So as we move towards being a more urban species, the urban space becomes something that we have to rethink. And this talk really illustrates some of the ways in which we're practically trying to make sense of that. The context is quite clear that the, the world is on course for a catastrophic climate change of, at the present time, estimated by the scientists as something like six degree rise. And that is so significant that we have to do something pretty urgently, not just in terms of our day-to-day -day organizations, but absolutely everybody, in a sense, participating in something. So there's a widespread need to consider how we might attend to this. And we have examples, if you like, of ways in which we're beginning to capture the imagination of human species to take us in this new direction. And the one example that I find really really fascinates me and I think could indicate a way forward is the internet and the internet illustrates a number of things that previously we've done but rather clunkily if you like it's connecting people it's building networks it's establishing relationships but more than anything it's illustrating a way in which emergence the idea of emergent uh, activity between human beings can start to be mapped and utilized to provide us with some for forward thinking, if you like, about where we might go next and enable people to pick up those ideas and run with them in different settings. That, in a sense, is, is where I begin my story with the community work I've been doing because it raised a puzzle for me. How do we work in our communities on a day-to-day -day basis, um, bringing people together so they can share their experiences both within the local settings, so within the, the town that you live in or the neighbourhood that you sit in, you, that you share with your friends and family, but also bringing, to, bring that, bringing that into the global context. What do we do if we have an issue that we want to try and puzzle out, but we haven't got an immediate solution in our own setting? So how do we begin to network in, in our world around the themes that matter most? And it's rather like Fordism. Um, Henry Ford, as this picture illustrates years back, thinking about putting motor cars into the populace, into the masses. And from my work, I'm really interested in the idea of sustainability. How do we start to get the, the, the basic concepts of how we manage food, water, energy, waste, transport, but we do it in a sustainable way so our footprint on the planet is a lot less, um, a lot more benign, if you like. So effectively, how do we make a Fordism for sustainability? How do we flat pack sustainability into the planet at this point? And there's two or three lead points, I guess, that help us there. Um, there's a relationship change that might be part of it. How do we change the relationship from the egocentric way in which we've developed our industrial systems towards what I've always called an ecocentric model? One where that relationship with the environment and with the natural world starts to guide our day-to-day -day practices. And if we start to think about that, we begin to look at our urban spaces differently. We can start to imagine a landscape where 
we have a much more direct relationship with the natural environment. And instead of alienating ourselves from it, we start to deliberately de design ourselves into a new relationship with nature. To do that, we need some tools and some equipment and some methods. And those, those need to be absolutely open source, available to everybody, cheap, easy, accessible. They've got to be able to operate within small scale settings and in a sense be utilised at the entire system level. And most, most of all, I guess, they, they, they have to be creative. They can't be deterministic. So we want to use the human creative gene, if you like, and really pursue that with the type of approaches that we adopt so that we can get the best possible options available for the settings that we find ourselves in. And in that context, if you like, what I've been working on are two or three key projects in my own life. One's been Incredible Edible, which is a community food project that I've been working on in Todmorden in Lancashire. Um, we've been looking at the ways in which we put food into the urban space. And the lessons we've learned from that have led us to a second project, most more recently, which attempts to do the flat pack. And we've called it the pop-up farm. And a pop-up farm is really simple. It's, at its centre, it's got the core ideas of sustainability thinking about how we manage food, how we manage energy, how we manage waste, how we look at the uh, resources we, we use every single day of our lives and rethink them. So we use less of them or we use them more intelligently. Um, to get into that frame of mind, we need somewhere to think. So we thought, well, where do you go? If you want to think something out, in our case, in our culture, often the old geezers that invent things go and sit in sheds. So we decided we'd have a plotting shed. So if you imagine there's three circles in a pop-up farm, there's the plotting shed in the centre, there's then the activities that take place around the plotting shed that people do to do those key things, and then there's the ways in which they use those activities to move into the community and outwards from there. So it's a very practical, grounded activity. It's driven by challenges, uh, making the ordinary things extraordinary. So the ways in which we use the, the the, the playground of a school site, which is often tarmac, to say, could we transform this and make it into a living, physical living environment which could feed some of our lunchtime activities in school, that could provide children with an understanding of the biodiversity that's around, that could encourage a wider sort of community involvement. Um, so those little small changes, if you like, begin to have bigger effects. And those we found in lots of these community projects start to then move people's habits and behaviour. And once that begins to tip, then we start to see significant and perhaps quite radical transitions from ego to eco. Nature guides us all the way. We learn the lessons from, for living, if you like, from the natural world and translate them into an urban setting. And in the context of uh, the pop-up farm, we, we are deliberately choosing certain words. Farm has got an historical um, connection, if you like, to industrialization of farming and agribusiness. Our interest is how we use the metaphor of the farm to grow sustainable communities, to think about the ways in which you might have single school sites which become community farms, growing their own sustainable community, perhaps growing lots of food on the school site, but then begin to network them. And this is the step change, I suppose, from individual localised activity to something that's more modular and extended. So we farm not extensively but intensively. So you could look across the city and you could think of the ways in which the different school environments provide a, f uh, a bit of land space on their own which are being developed by their own communities but then you begin to join them up. And in joining them up, you start to develop yield potential. You start to look at the ways in which we might be able to connect up those businesses that are distribution businesses with the food that might be created and grown within those school community sites. You might look at the ways in which they develop energy solutions for their own communities. We've got examples, for, for example, up in, in one of the schools that we're, networks we're working on in Oldham, uh, in Lancashire, where the bus stop route to school is now being described as an edible bus stop route so you can move from bus stop to bus stop and each one is attended to by the community and um, you could look at the ways in which you develop modular forests in your community environment and you deliberately don't plant the trees in the ground you put a root stock into the tree you put a 1 120 root stock on a, a, a an apple tree 
And what you then start to do is you plonk it into metre square pots and you work out where the best place for the community orchard might be to challenge and to think again about the urban spaces. Often it's derelict land, often it's reclaiming that land and using it differently, maybe on a short-term basis. So the pop-up concept, in a sense, is just reframing the way we think about the urban space. It's a really simple solution. It's extremely exciting times to get this work going on. And we're just about at the point now of our second phase in this project. And our big example at present has been in Africa, in Accra, and in Uganda, um, which you can refer to from the website I've put up. And also, uh, the next stage will be to develop 40 schools within a direct neighbourhood in Burnley. Uh, linking the primary school sector together and starting to get them to talk about the possibilities of doing this as a new form of economy, an eco-economy, uh, which starts to take us into some of the discussions that the Foundation is very much involved in.